I'm going to show you two more specialized audio editing techniques. One's called normalizing, and the other is sample-based editing. To follow along, go to Working Files, Projects, and go on down to 1803, Normalize and Samples. When you normalize audio, you are adjusting it to a certain peak level. The peak level is described by the 0 dBFS, 0 decibels below full scale. So you set it to some value at 0 or below. So it'll be either 0 or a negative number. And usually give yourself a little bit of headroom. So you might normalize, let's say, minus 3 dBFS, so that if you want to raise the audio a little bit later or drop it later, you've got some room to do that in case you have really loud audio. Another reason to normalize is to take a bunch of clips that have different volume levels and have all their peak values be the same, so they'll be consistent throughout. That's what I want to do here. If you look at these four clips, you can see that the volume levels are different, and I'll make that more obvious by pulling them up and giving myself a little more headroom here. I'll pull down the audio so you can see the waveforms better. You can see this right channel here is pretty loud in the first clip, but drops off. The right channel is the lavalier mic I put here on Louise, and the first couple of shots I did were, I thought, just a little bit loud when I was looking at the view meter in my camera, so I decided to knock it down a bit for the rest of the shots. That way I had some more headroom when I wanted to edit. So this one is quite a bit louder than these other guys, but in fact I could raise the volume of these guys. It's not too loud over here, so I want to get all four of these to have the same peak volumes. I can do that. The microphone on top here was the shotgun mic on the camera, and you can see that the volume levels there are kind of vary depending on where the camera was pointed. I want to get them consistent too. So the normal process would be to select all four clips and then normalize them all at once. The trouble is, when Premiere Pro normalizes, it looks for the loudest volume of one of the channels. So here, let's say, it would see that channel's already pretty loud, so it wouldn't change it much. Here it would see that channel's pretty loud, so it wouldn't change this very much. And these two guys would go up a little bit. So I'm going to show you the way that I don't want to use first, and then I'll show you the way that I want to use after that. So I'm going to make some more room here by lifting this up here so you can see everything, including the video portion. I'm going to select all four clips here by marquee selecting them. Now I'm going to right-click on any one of them and select Audio Gain. Now I've used Audio Gain before when a clip was too quiet, and we can only raise it 6 dB if we use the volume control and the effect controls panel. So we use this thing to raise it up 12 dB. But now I want to normalize. I want to normalize all peaks to something less than 0 dB. Now, what's happened here is that Premiere has analyzed all four clips and sees that the loudest passage, the loudest volume level, is minus 3 dBFS. It means it's minus 3 below this 0 line here. That's probably one of these guys here or one of the peaks over here. So what I want to do is I want to make all the peaks about minus 3 or so, because that gives me headroom for all of them, but also raises them up to a consistent level. So I'm going to type in minus 3 here. There you go. Click away. When I click OK, it's going to then apply that to all these clips, and you will see the waveforms change here. So watch this. Now, it did raise these guys so that they went up to about minus 3, but it didn't touch these guys, really, because there's already some minus 3 levels here on one of the channels. And that's not really what I want to do. I want to work on the channels individually. So I'm going to go Control or Command Z to undo that. What I need to do is split out the audio channels into separate mono clips. And so what I do is I go to this first clip over here, go up to Clip, and the audio options, break out the mono, do it for the next one. I'm going to do it for all four here, so bear with me while I do all four of them. Going down the line here, clip, break out to mono, and do that last one down here at the bottom, right there, and break you out to mono as well. There you go. Now what I want to do is just work only on the lavalier mic. I'll skip working on the shotgun just so I can save some time here. So I want to work on the right channel only. I can put these clips right on here and replace these guys very easily. So I'm going to see which one this is. This is number one. I'm going to take the number one audio there and replace that. Number two and replace that. Number three, right, and replace that one. We're all going to fit right in the place there. And then number four, replace that one right there. There we go. Now I want to have these guys normalized. So I'm going to take all four of those, right click and say audio gain, and I want to have minus 3 dBFS, so I'm going to normalize all peaks to minus 3, minus 3 like that, and now watch these things on the right in particular here. Bam, they all go up. So now the audio levels will all be the same. I won't need to try to fix this as I edit these clips together. I won't need to try to adjust them to have them all match. So here's this first one. That's it all the way to the big circle line. There you go, this last one. 
job. That is a much better. So the audio volume levels are now going to be consistent throughout, which is great. As I make edits here and put these things together one next to the other, there won't be any funny little jumps when I go from one clip to the next. That's a good thing. Another really cool feature in Premiere Pro is that you can do what's called audio sample-based editing. When you edit with video, you edit on a frame basis, one frame at a time. Let's say I want to do a really precise edit. I'm going to go inside here, let's say, and I want to really make a precise edit. I'm going to zoom in by pressing the plus key a whole bunch of times here. What you see now is one frame at a time. So I can edit only at one frame at a time. So let's say I want to edit right there between those two shots, right there. I want to have an audio edit that's so precise that I want it right there, and I can't do it. Not in this frame-based business where there are only 30 frames per second. But in this case, there are 48,000 audio samples per second, and I can edit on a sample basis. Pretty amazing, really. So I'm going to go up here to this little flyout menu, to the panel menu, and go on down to Show Audio Time Units. Click on that, and now you're in Samples. You're looking at 48,000 samples per second. You see this is like 1 second and 12,000 samples there, 1 second and 0 samples. So that's 12,000 samples from there to there. If I start zooming in now, you'll see what I mean. You can zoom all the way in like this and see each individual sample. The waveforms are made up of little samples, one sample at a time. Boom, boom. Each one of those things is a sample. You got 650 here and 700. You got 50 samples between there. You keep on zooming in closer and closer and closer down to a single sample if you want to. Much more precise editing. I'm not saying that you necessarily need to do it so precisely like this, but sometimes you're going to find yourself where you really need to make a very careful edit where you want to just precisely trim and edit at some point. And you can do that with the sample based editor. So Premiere knows that you've now edited down here at the sample base, and then we'll compensate for that in terms of how it deals with the video frames. So when you're done editing at the audio sample level, you can switch back to the previous display just by going up to the panel menu there and unchecking audio time units. So that's how you normalize audio and do audio sample based editing.